I absolutely love playing games on my Nintendo Switch. It's one of those systems that just, it clicks with me. I mean, I enjoyed the Wii and the Wii U, but none of them really clicked, like I say, like the Nintendo Switch has done for me. Now, one of the things with the Switch that a lot of people love that I don't really take part in a whole lot is handheld gaming. For me, I just don't like playing, and I've talked about this in the past, I don't like the feel of Joy-Cons in the hands. I don't think the system feels great in the hands without anything on it. Well, that is where the team from Mexico have come out with their new Grip Con for the Nintendo Switch and Switch OLED. And not only that, they also have a carrying case designed to go with it as well. In addition to this, make sure you stay tuned to the channel because they have a separate pro style controller also based on this same theming. So let's go ahead, let's take this out of the box, Let's see how it fits on our Switch and our Switch OLED. We're also going to test and see how they fit into a dock. Let's go get started. When it comes to unboxing, there wasn't much to it, which is why I pretty much didn't film it on here. Just comes out of the box. It's got a nice plastic uh, sort of styrofoam sleeve that it comes in, comes with the grip itself, along with your instruction manual. Now, I do have my Switch OLED here, and just to slide it in, we're going to just go right like that. Slides right into place. It's a beautiful thing. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and hit the power button. Power's up. You can see the LEDs on either side. Continue. Let's turn up our brightness here so you can see a little bit better. There we go. Now, one of the things I did want to show on here too is I do have my Switch OLED dock. This will fit, or will it not? It will not fit with your Switch on the grip. So it is something where you will have to go ahead and remove to go ahead and be able to charge your switch or use it in dock mode. Now, uh, taking a look here really quick at the instruction manual. Walks you through basically all the button layouts and everything right here, as far as your ABXY, your L and your ZL, R and ZR, uh, your right button mapping. So it does have mappable buttons on the back, haptic strength, uh, where you can change that. Uh, and then it does have your programming, uh, programmable buttons on back. And as you can see here, they are calling out that it will work with both the Switch and the Switch OLED. We've obviously got the OLED in here right now. I'm gonna go grab my regular Switch and we're gonna test that out too. Now, and I'm gonna give you a real quick tip here. If you're ever wondering, if you're watching a video and wondering, is it a Switch or a Switch OLED that you're looking at? Easy way to tell is if they ever show the back, the kickstand design. That's your Switch OLED kickstand. And then original Switch has just the little dinky one. So even like I've got a custom case on here and everything, you can still tell that this is the original Switch versus the OLED. Now, to fit everything in here, this is kind of a, a rubberized textured sort of back that provides a little bit of friction. Um, but now we are plugged in, you see the LEDs are on. And now we go. Wait a second, what the hell? This is wireless? Check this out. This is the weirdest thing. Why is that connected wirelessly? So it somehow has Bluetooth on it. That's news to me. So reading the manual here says that uh, to reset the controller, I have to hold the home button for 10 seconds or head to change grip order in the switch settings. The controller will power off and reset it. So let's see if that will actually work for what we need here. Because it's still paired to this one. So 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000, 7 1,000, 8 1,000, 9 1,000, and it just disconnected. Now let's see, although it vibrated again then too, so it may have paired before I could go ahead and switch the switch. All right, so you know, we're still connected to this system. What in the world? That is the wildest thing. So I will admit to being stumped. I cannot get this to pair to my Switch, my standard Switch. I will be reaching out to Nexco to find out what's going on. I can delete and repair to my OLED, no problem. For some reason, it's just not wanting to connect to my Switch. But like I say, I will reach out to them. Now, a couple additional things on the back is you do also have a couple buttons here. This is your rumble intensity uh, up and down. So that is down. 
that is up on that side there. You do also have uh, buttons here for programming purposes and then the programmable buttons on the back. Now, taking a look one last time through the manual, I wanna take a look how to change the lights and uh, make some other changes on here too. All right, so basically you've got this button here that if I press once, you can see it changed to red. There's yellow, blue, green, cyan or magenta orange, kind of a light blue, rainbow colored, back to red. It also changes the colors around the rings. Now if I hit it twice, it changes to what they call a breathing mode as well. And then I can go ahead, if I press the, um, hold this button down and then press up or down, it'll change the brightness, I believe. Hold the lighting button and press up, down on the D-pad at the same time. Okay, so I have to do it at the same time. There we go. And it basically switches it between, there's 25%, 50, 75, and 100. And then we're gonna go back to, we're gonna just use red, I think. And then to turn the turbo mode on and off, you've got a turbo button here. You just press and hold that down. Press any of those to go ahead and uh, activate that. Uh, if you do it a second time, it'll be a, a auto fire. And then to disable it, you just do it a third time. And then you can also go ahead and adjust the speed of the turbo by holding turbo plus to speed it up, minus to speed it down. So let's go ahead and let's dive into some gameplay here dive into some Yoshi's Crafter World. Super cute game. If you've not played it before, highly recommend it. It is a great action platformer that's just, it's stupid fun. That's the best thing about it. It's so much fun and it's very cute, especially if you like games like I would say a little big planet, this would be right up your alley. Button presses feel really good. Now, I will admit that I've been playing with this for a little while now. I actually took this with me to the Southeast Game Exchange. Yeah, Rumble feels really good too. See how many shy guys we can pick up. And when I say pick up, I mean convert to eggs. And I'm hoping too you can hear the rumble going off because it is very impressive. Yep, so, you know, good performance here on an action platform. I mean, nothing really much to talk about. This isn't the most challenging of games. Now, the way I always test out controllers with Street Fighter is I go ahead, I start with the analog stick because that's just what I prefer. Oh, I hate T-Hawk. Um, start with the analog stick, then I move to the D-pad, and if there's a round three, whichever one I like the best is what I finish round three with. It went right through him. Ugh. Got him again. Oh, can we get him? Oh, yes, we pulled off all the moves. We got T-Hawk there with the analog stick. Now we're gonna move to the D-pad. Oh no! I'm gonna do the third round with the D-pad because I did not get to try the dragon uppercut and I screwed up my button mappings here, so. Got him. All right, so I can pull off all the moves with both. Now I am moving to the D-pad or to the analog stick since I am just more comfortable with that. He jumped right through my flaming fireball. Oh, he got me. So let's try Kirby tilt and tumble. So gyroscope does work. So, all right, I am, that's not gonna be my, my cup of tea here, so. Dive into some Mario Land 2. Oh! Yeah, I didn't mean to miss that. Yeah, everything is feeling nice and precise here. Exactly what I want it to be. One of the reasons you see me 
move the angle of the system front to back is I've got a bit of a glare from the lights. Oh, got crunched. Right idea though. And we're gonna have Art recreate life because we're gonna have Jungle Boy take on Hook for the FTR title. Is he not in here? What? No, Ricky Starks has the FTW Championship, so I guess we're going to have Jungle Boy take it from Ricky Starks then. The following contest is set for one fall, and it is for the FTW World Championship. Oh, I hate that about this game. It's one of the things that a lot of times the computer can get a a jump on you before the bell even rings. Nice fireman's carry takedown. Chop you very much. Snapmare takeover. Rest hold. What was that glitchiness? So overall, what do I think of the GripCon from Nexigo? Um, it's comfortable, I will say that much. I like a lot of the features that it has to it. Um, I don't know why I'm having issues pairing it, yeah, rearrange his face, pairing it between my Switch OLED and my original Switch. That's just really weird. Um, the LEDs are interesting and fun. Uh, the fact that it worked wirelessly is just bizarre to me. Um, the the sticks and the D-pad feel great. The button presses are good. Let's see if we can get a finisher going here. Boom! Let's try that one more time. Because that could make this the greatest night in the history of this great sport! Tony Savali! For the oh, ref, come on, get in there. One, two, three. And your new FTW champion, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. So what do I think of the GripCon from Nexigo? Well, first and foremost, it's accurate. I really do like these Hall Effect sensors that this has on it. And it feels very similar to their Pro Controller that I've also recently reviewed. If you want to check this out, I also have a link for you where you can check the review of this out too. Now, I'm very puzzled at how this has wireless communication on it. The fact that it actually worked with my Switch OLED while trying to pair to my original Switch definitely had me puzzled. This is supposed to just communicate through the port down below. So somehow this has Joy-Con technology built into it. I'm, I'm almost wondering if these aren't basically that controller there with a different body in between. Hard to say. Um, overall, very, very comfortable. Um, it still makes the Switch wide. And for me, that's one of the things that I've never really been a fan of the Switch in handheld mode. And this does make it wider. I will say more comfortable, more precise, and better features than what the Split Pad Pro or the Split Pad Pro Lite, this, the thinner version, has. Um, I do like the LEDs on here, the overall look and design. This is a pretty nice setup on here. Now, in addition, like I mentioned, they do have a carrying case for it as well. And the nice thing is you can store 10 different game cartridges in the top here. You've got kind of a, a zippered mesh net there. And you can actually transport the grip with your Switch installed on it. And while it's not a hard case, it's got some resiliency to it. You don't want to throw your switch off a bridge or something like that, RGT85, um, because you might lose your keys and it may also damage your system. But overall, for a grip, this is probably one of the nicest ones I've ever tested. Now, I will have a link to where you can pick one of these up down below in a pinned comment. It is an affiliate link, so it does help support the channel. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any discount codes or anything like that that I can pass on at this time. Um, I do want to thank Nexco for sending us one of these to check out. They never review any of the 
you know videos that we put up beforehand but they've been a long time supporter of the channel and I do really appreciate that now if you do want to check out some of the other reviews we've done on other Nexago products I'll have those linked for you right here on screen we've done other grips other cases other controllers and a whole lot more